All right, guys, so we're going to go on to the next lesson. This is 6.1, tangent properties. So we identified what a tangent is, so now there's going to be a couple of unique properties that deal with tangents. Okay? So uh, before we move on, let's just see if we can review a few things. Um, congruent circles. Let me get my pen. So for congruent circles, remember we said uh, the other lesson that they have to have the same radius. And so here, these circles have the same radius. So that would be B. Concentric circles, we said concentric circles have the same center and they have to be coplanar. So that would be A. And then as we move on to these others, this is going to practice naming them. Okay, so a radius. So on a radius, we have, we actually have three different radii in this one. We have AG, we have GD, and we have GE. Okay, so make sure you remember how to name the radii. Chord, there's actually one, two, I see three chords here that you can name. Um, let's just get a different colored pen. We have chord A, B. We have chord B, C. And then we also have chord A, D, which A, D is a special chord, which goes right there. The A, D is going to be your longest chord, and that's your diameter. Tangent, this is our main focus for this lesson. Our tangent is going to be a line that touches a circle at one point. So that's F, H. And you have to put the arrows, okay? So F, H, and that's it. Central angle. I see only one central angle, and that would be angle D, G, E. Minor arc, there's actually a lot of minor arcs, so we're just gonna name two of them, okay? So we have arc A, B. And arc FE. But there's a lot, lot more. So we're not going to name all of those. Major arc. I'm going to get my highlighter for this one. For major arc, you want to focus on this diameter right here just to make sure you go more than halfway. Okay. Now you don't always have to relate it to the diameter because you have like this major arc right here that goes all the way from A through one of those letters all the way to F. That's an example of a major arc. Let's do one more. You could also look at this one here. That's another major arc. Okay, so there's a bunch of different major arcs that you could name. We're just going to name two. So we've got blue arc is going to be F. Notice it starts with F. And you can pick any of those letters in between and just make sure you end on A. So I'm just going to go F, E, A. And don't forget your arc symbol. Let's name the pink one. The pink one start with E or D. So I'm going to start with D. And then I'm going to go touch any letter. I could choose B, A, or F. So I'm going to do D, B, E. That's the pink major arc that I named. Okay, so I'm going to erase that now because now I want to focus on the semicircle. How do we name the semicircle? The semicircle is named by focusing on the diameter. So I'm going to go back and highlight that diameter again. There's my diameter. And so your semicircle can be on this side of that one or the other side. So you want to list both of those semicircles. So we have A, E, D. Okay, that's a semicircle. Again, you could have put F in the middle, okay, because it touches, it goes to either one of those. And then the other semicircle, we have A, B, D. And again, in the middle, you could have put C right there in the middle. Okay, so there, remember we said there's a couple different ways to name that. All right, so that's a little review from yesterday. Naming parts of a circle and a couple of terms that deal with circles. There's a couple more terms on, um, 
on identifying different types of circles. Okay, so this one right here is called tangent circles. So you want to write this definition down. Tangent circles are two circles that are tangent to the same line at the same point. Now, you don't always have to draw that line right there, okay? So the line doesn't always appear. So if they're going to be tangent, they can be either externally tangent or internally tangent, okay? So let me tell you what they mean by a line. So if I were to put a line right here, you can see that the green circle and the yellow circle are tangent to this black line that I drew that I just highlighted in pink, okay? And they're tangent right here at this point of tangency right there, okay? Let's try that again with the other one. If I'm looking at this line right here, try to draw it the best I can, that is a tangent line, okay? And I'm gonna highlight in pink. That one, the both the yellow and that purple or bluish circle are tangent to that one at this particular point right there. Okay. So which ones are externally tangent? Okay. The two that are externally tangent is the yellow slash green circles. Okay, those are externally tangent. Actually, let's practice writing, naming the circles. So if I were to put some letters on these, let's say this is circle O, this is circle T, and this is circle S. So then circle O and circle S are externally tangent. Which two circles are internally tangent? That would be circle T and circle S. Those are internally tangent. It's like one circle's inside the other. Okay, there's one more type of uh, tangent that I want to talk about, and that's a common tangent. So a common tangent deals with a line that is tangent to two or more circles. Okay, this one also has some familiar words. This can be an internal or external common tangent. Let me use colors here. So this can be an internal or external common tangent, okay? So <clears throat> if I were to name these lines, lines M and N, which one would be the internal tangent? This would be line N. The external tangent would be line M, okay? So I'm gonna highlight those also. So the external tangent, you'll notice this tangent out here that I just highlighted in pink, it's on the outside of both the red circle and the green circle. But if you look at this blue line right here, that one is kind of in between the red circle and the green circle. So these are common tangents because for one, they're tangent to two circles, and then um, these are also Uh, these are also, uh, no, they're just tangent to two circles. That's it, okay? But they could also be in between or strictly on the outside. Okay, let's go to our first investigation that deal with the first um, property of a tangent line. So it says construct a circle and label it U, okay? So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to use my circle here. Okay, so there's my circle, and then they said to name it U. 
and it says using a straight edge draw a line that appears to touch the circle at one point okay so here's where you want to get your ruler and draw a line that appears to touch it at one point so you want to kind of just line up your ruler right there and then try to get it to touch only at one point and then draw a line okay so here's our tangent right there okay and then it says label the point that appears to touch your circle t so do your best to locate point t so mine looks like about right there that's point t so now it says get your ruler i'm going to use my straight edge for here that i have and connect u to t okay All right, so there we go. And so we have this radius UT. Now it says use your protractor and measure the angles at T. So I'll get my protractor out and you can kind of see. When I line it up right there at T. And so what does it look like those angles are? It's right there on the 90, okay? So this angle right here is 90. And then of course this angle over here is 90 because of the 180 rule, because that's a linear pair. So the conjecture here that you need to have memorized now is that any time you have a radius and it goes to the point of tangency, of a tangent line then that's going to make a 90 degree angle right there and right there okay so what word goes in that blank right there the word that goes in that blank is a tangent to a circle is blank to the radius drawn to the point of tangency so that it would be perpendicular Okay, this is the symbol for perpendicular. So anytime you see a radius and it's connected to a point of tangency, they're not gonna draw the 90 degree angle for you. You now have to know that that's 90. Okay, so that's the one conjecture you have to have memorized. Here's the second one, okay? It says, construct a circle and label it center E. Then choose a point outside the circle. Okay, so let's draw our circle again. Okay, and you should use practice using your compass. I know you haven't used that in a long time. Okay, so draw a circle. Now get your radius, oh no, pick a point. It says, let's go ahead and label that circle E, and then pick a point out here and label that N. Okay, so there's point N. So let's draw two lines that go through point N and our tangent to the circle. So I'm gonna get my ruler. I'm gonna place it at N. I'm gonna try to make it up here, tangent to the circle. All right, so here we go. Let me get my blue pen. Okay, so there's one. Now do the same, it says to draw two lines. So now I'm going to come over here and that's the only other way that it could be tangent. Okay, so let me reinforce my point in. Here's a point of tangency right there. There's a point of tangency right there. It says label the points of tangency A and G. So there's A and G. 
Now it says compare the tangent segments AN and GN. So now I'm going to get my highlighter. Okay, here's tangent segment GN, and here's tangent segment AN. So they want us to compare the measures of those two segments. Okay, well, it didn't say measures, but that's the only way we can compare two segments. So I'm gonna put it right here on centimeters. This is roughly about eight and a half. So now I'm gonna come over here. And what do you know, it's about eight and a half. So I'm gonna put my pen. I'm gonna put two big tick marks on here because this is the property that you now have to know. Whenever you have tangent segments to a circle from a point, meaning one point, they are congruent. I'm gonna use my symbol congruent instead of writing out the word. So those are congruent. All right, that's it. Those are the two main properties that you have to know. So now let's put those into what some problems would look like. So here it says, what is W? So W, wowzers, W is this angle right here. So what is the measure of that angle? Okay, well, first thing that I can think of is that this shape right here is a quadrilateral. Some of y'all might say, oh, it's a kite. And you're right, it is a kite because these radii are always equal and these two are always equal. Okay, and so if you remember in a kite, these two angles are equal. But what is one of these angles? One of these angles is 90 degrees because that's what you just learned. So if that's 90 and that's 90, these two right here add up to 180, which means this angle here and this angle here are also 180 because 180 plus 180 always equal 360 and 360 is always the case for a quadrilateral. So here's a quick way to look at it. Let me get my eraser so I can make some space there. This right here, this angle, the central angle right here, is, is 130 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna highlight that in blue. This angle out here is always, those two blue angles are always gonna add up to 180 degrees, no matter what, because why these two out here that I'm going to highlight in pink or yellow, this angle right here and this angle right here are always 90 and 90. So what's 180 minus 130? 50 degrees. So angle W is 50 degrees. Let's look at this next one. This next one we have two tangent lines. Okay, these are. Where's my highlighter? Come on, highlighter. There we go. This is tangent and this is tangent. Okay, so one property that you picked up is that if you have two tangents to one point, that means these are congruent. Well, what kind of shape does that make this right here? An isosceles triangle. So it says to find the measure of X, that means this measure over here should be the same because those are base angles in an isosceles triangle. So use your 180 degree rule for a triangle that leaves 140 left making angle X 70 because the other one is 70. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one, it has So, we have a radius right here. That's 5 centimeters. We have a tangent right here and that's 15 centimeters and we need to find the length of uh, SA which goes from there to there. So one thing that you need to pick up is that this angle right here is 90 degrees, okay, because that's what we just learned. And so with that said, that makes a right triangle. And so now you can do Pythagorean theorem to figure out this whole piece and then we'll figure out how to figure out how to get SA. So we're going to do 5 squared plus 15 squared 
in our calculator. And so when we square root that, we get this whole piece to be 15.81. Well, if the whole piece is 15.81, how are we going to figure out just the green segment? That means we have to know what this is. Well, these are both radii, so that means this is 5 and that's 5. So just subtract 5, and that means this is 10.81 centimeters. All right, last one. Okay, this one we have to figure out the length of W. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that in blue. So W goes from there to there. It goes from that point of tangency to this point out here. So how can we figure out what that is? Well, all I know is that this angle measure right here is 130 degrees. Well, if I draw in this radius right here, that's 180, that's uh, 90 degrees right here. Well, then that means if this is 130, we learned that central angles have the same as its intercepted arc. So that means this is 130 degrees. And if that's 130 degrees, that means that means this angle right here is 50 degrees. Okay, and so if that's 50 degrees, we know this radius right here in red is also 10 centimeters. Guess what we can do? Look at this right triangle that I'm about to redraw that looks exactly like that one right here. This is W. This is 10 centimeters, and this is 50 degrees. So what do you do to figure out W? You have to do trigonometry. So I'm going to say this is my opposite side, and this is my adjacent side. So I'm going to use tangent of 50 degrees equals W over 10. So when the variable is on top, that means I'm going to multiply 10 times tangent of 50 degrees, 11.918 centimeters is what W would be. And that's